Hello there, Swifters. This is Prof G, and by the end of this video, you will be savvy sorters of structs and classes. We will use a playground first to review the sorted and sort methods. We'll learn how to apply these methods to sort an array of structs or classes based on a single property of the struct or class. We'll sort the table view when a segment in a segmented control has been pressed, and we'll automatically sort the table view in alphabetical order when your app first runs and the user is successfully logged in. Let's sort this out. Now before we get into sorting the table view cells, let's quickly make sure that we know how to sort. And we'll do this by looking at some code examples in a playground. So first we'll go through these examples. We'll sort a string array in A to Z and then Z to A order. And we'll also cover the difference between the sorted and the sort methods. Then we'll briefly go through how to sort a struct or a class based on one of its properties. Then we can update our project to sort the table view cells. So let's first create a new playground. With Xcode open, we'll go to the File menu and select New, Playgrounds. Select the blank playground and click Next. I'm going to give the playground the name Sorting and click Create, then click Finish. I'll double click the title bar to expand the playground to full screen. I'll get rid of this Hello Playground string and I'll add an array of strings var, favorite foods, equals, and then in square brackets, the strings pizza, apple pie, sushi, and bacon, all separated by commas and enclosed in double quotes. Now in the line below that, I'm going to declare a constant to hold my new sorted array. So I'll say let a to z foods equals, and then I'll refer to favorite foods that I created above dot. And when I type in sort, I've got a bunch of options in here. I'm going to select this one sorted by. Then we'll use the super concise shortcut to sort in ascending order. And that's just the less than symbol. That's it. Now, if we were sorting numbers, this would sort from small numbers to large numbers, say zero to nine. But in the case of strings, it'll sort alphabetically from A to Z. Now let's see what this produces. On the next line, we'll say print. And then in between the parentheses, A to Z foods, shift return to take a look at the results. And ah, my Xcode is acting slowly, so I'm gonna click in the upper right hand corner, show the inspector's pane, change the platform setting so that the platform is Mac OS, and I'm gonna replace import UI kit with import playground support. Now I can go to my last line and click on the play button to execute my code. Now the first run in a new playground usually takes a little bit of time, but I can see down below A to Z foods has all the elements of the original favorite foods array, but now they're in alphabetical order. Nice. Now let's try this in reverse alphabetical order. We'll say let z to a foods equals favorite foods dot sorted by, and we'll put in the greater than symbol this time. We'll say print z to a foods, shift return to run, and we see the sort order here is in reverse alphabetical order. Nice. Now in all of these cases, the sorted method returns a new array. It doesn't alter the original favorite foods array. And if we say print favorite foods, we can take a look down below and we see the original array exists and the original sort order hasn't been changed. Now, what if we want to change the sort order for favorite foods? Well, one thing that we can do is we could refer to favorite foods dot and we can use sort by instead of sorted by. Look at the code completion description for sort by. It says sorts the collection in place. In place means it's going to change the sort order of this value. That's as opposed to sorted, which returns a new value, but leaves the original value unchanged. So I'm going to press return to accept this, and it otherwise works the same way. So if I put in a less than symbol in here, it will sort the string array alphabetically. Then I'll just copy print favorite foods, paste it down below, shift return to execute, and we can see, hey, hey, the favorite foods array has now been sorted in alphabetical order. Nice. So now let's take a look at how we would sort on a property value of a struct or class. And it works the same way regardless of whether it's a struct or a class. So for simplicity, I'm going to create a simple struct here. I'll say struct capital food, open and close curlies, and inside I'll have two properties, var name colon string and var type colon string. Then I'll initialize an empty foods array with var lowercase foods equals, and then in brackets, uppercase food, then open and close parentheses. The line I just typed, by the way, is same as the syntax var foods colon, and then in brackets, food equals empty square brackets. Then I'll append new food values to my empty foods array. So I'll say lowercase foods dot append open parentheses, and inside I'll say uppercase food open parens, I'll press return, I'll get the default initializer here, and for the name I'll put in carrot, and for the type I'll put in the string vegetable. Then I'll highlight the line I just typed, and I'll paste it three times down below, but in the second value here I'll change the name to bacon, and the type to meat, then the line below that, the name to almond, the type nut, and below that I'll say the name is ice cream, and the type dairy. Yep. Then let's sort on name. So we'll say foods.sort, we'll select sort by, and then 
In this highlighted area that's in blue, we're going to replace this with open and close curly brace. Then we're going to put in the shorthand syntax, which is $0.name is less than $1.name. What that means is take a look at one value, then the value after it, that's the $0 and the $1, compare the .name properties for each of these, and make sure that the first value is less than the second value, and for string arrays that means sort it in alphabetical order. That's it. Now if we printed the array name, it would print all of the values on the same line and between brackets. Instead what we'll do is we'll use a loop and we'll print the name and the type for each of the elements on their own separate line. So we'll start that off with for food in foods, open and close curlies, then inside print and in parentheses we'll say food.name comma food.type, shift return, and let's take a look at what we got. Excellent, all sorted on the first name value. The first element is almond, so we have an almond nut first, then the next is B, bacon and meat, C, carrot vegetables, and I, ice cream dairy. If you want, you can try to modify the code, and instead of sorting on name, you can try to sort on the type, but I think we've got it down. We're ready to move on and add sorting to our project. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be responding to our sort segment control. We already have an IB outlet for that control, but we need to create an IB action. We'll call that sort segment pressed. Then inside this IB action, we're going to call a helper function. Now we're going to write this as a helper function because we might call the function to sort our table view, even if you haven't clicked on the segment control. So for example, when you first show the table view, the default segmented control selection is A to Z, but the user hasn't clicked on that segment, but we should still sort it in alphabetical order. So we'll call that helper function sort based on segment pressed. This is it down below. It's just a switch case statement. And what we're switching on is our sort segment control and the property is selected segment index. Now any segmented control has has that property and it's going to tell you which segment has been selected. Now right now all we're going to do is we're going to respond to the first case and that's the one that sorts A to Z. Inside that we're going to set array. We're going to use the sort by that we just learned about. We're going to sort it in place so we'll use sort and not sorted. That will change the sort order of spot array and that's what we want. We're going to sort that array based on the name property so we say in between the curlies dollar sign zero dot name is less than dollar sign one dot name and now by doing that we've reordered the table views data source we've reordered the array so we've got to call table view dot reload data now we also want to call this function as soon as we've loaded data so in our view will appear what we'll do is inside of spots dot load data we'll simply call self sort based on segment pressed let's try it so you can close the playground, we don't need that anymore. Head over to spot list view controller .swift. Now we see we've already got an IB outlet for our segmented control, that's called sort segmented control. But we haven't created an IB action for that, that's going to be critical because we want to call a function every time we click on one of the individual segments. So I'm going to option click on main storyboard to get into the assistant editor mode side by side. Now to create the IB action for the segmented control, I suggest you click and drag from the document outline because it's a little tricky. The segmented control is embedded inside of a bar button item. Because look what happened. I clicked on what I thought was the segmented control, but instead I've clicked on the bar button item that's just above this. So you want to go into the document outline, make sure that you're clicking on sort segmented control, then control drag. And I'm going to insert this just before the last curly in the main class. So that's just before the curly brace that comes just before our extension that handles the table view. I'll let go to release this. I'll name this sort segment pressed Then pull to select the type as UI segmented control. Click connect. Then you can click in the X in the upper left hand corner of the main storyboard to get back into the standard editor mode. Let's code those functions. So just above the IB action that we added, I'm going to create the helper function func, sort based on segment pressed, open and close parens, we've got no values we're passing in, open and close curlies, then I'm going to highlight the name of this function, I'm going to paste it in between the curlies of the IB action I created, make sure you've got open and close parens after the function name, then back inside of our function sort based on segment pressed, we'll create our switch case statement, so I'll say switch sort segmented control dot, I see the various properties in here, I'm going to select this first one here that's says selected segment index, that's an int value. You see code completion tells you this is the index number identifying the selected segment, that is the last segment touched. Remember these are zero indexed, so your first segment is gonna be zero. Press return to select this. I'm gonna open and close curlies. If I click on the little red error ball here, this is just Xcode telling me that I've got no cases inside of my switch case statement. Now unfortunately, if I select fix, Xcode won't automatically fill in a case for each of the different segment buttons in my segmented control, but I'll click fix anyway, and it does include the default case. 
So then I'll put in my case statements, case 0, colon, that's A to Z, case 1, colon, that's closest to farthest, and case 2, colon, that's going to be based on average rating. Hopefully I'll never hit the default case, but if I do, I'm going to print out to the console, hey, you shouldn't have gotten here. Check out the segmented control for an error. For now, I'm not going to deal with case 1 or case 2, so I'll just put print to do in both of those. But for case number 0, we'll say spots.spotsarray.sort by then open and close curlies, and inside we'll put in $0.name less than $1.name. That handles our sort. Nice. Now remember, we just sorted the array that makes up the values inside of our table view. So after this switch case statement, we want to say table view dot reload data. Now we can build and run, and let's take a look at what we got. So initially, nothing is sorted, even though A to Z is selected. We're going to change that in just a bit. But for now, why don't you click over on the distance segment. All that does is prints out to do in the console. But let's see what happens when we click back on segment zero. That's A dash Z. And look at that sweetness. Everything is ordered in alphabetical order. Excellent. Now, I wanted to show you the table view unsorted first. And this was just so that you could see things sort in alphabetical order when you clicked on the A to Z segment. What we really want to do, though, is because that segment, segment zero, is what's being selected when the app first runs, we want to make sure that the table view is sorted before the user sees it. So what we'll do is we're going to add a view will appear, and that's going to hold all the code to load our data, sort the data that we got back, and then reload the table view. And by doing it in view will appear, all this will happen before the table view even shows. So just below view did load in our code, we'll say view will appear, and inside that we'll call super dot view will appear. We'll pass in animated. Now this view will appear is going to take the place of the view did appear. So I'll highlight the only code that was inside of view did appear. That's this spots dot load data block. I'll cut it out with the command X. I'll paste it into view will appear, and then I can go ahead and delete my entire view did appear. We don't need that anymore. But now let's just add inside of the spots dot load data block. The first line will be self dot sort based on segment pressed. That'll sort the data we just got back from load data. And below that, we reload that data in our table view. Let's build and run and take a look. No errors. App launches. And hey, hey look at this. Right from the start, we've got everything sorted alphabetically in A to Z order. Nice. Next video, we're going to sort the different spots based on the distance from the device location. Keep at it, Swifter. You're skilled.